Hello everybody, welcome to mygenealogyaddiction.com. Today I'm going to show you how to access Heritage Quest online, which is an amazing resource. Uh, I found some great pieces of uh, history about many of my ancestors there. And when I didn't want to pay for Ancestry.com anymore, I uh, started using this tool to access the census. and. I found that even if you do have a Ancestry subscription, these uh, their census records at Heritage Quest were uh, transcribed by different people, so they may have spelled something different. And they pick up on, you know, if you do a search, you'll see that it pulls up some that Ancestry doesn't pull up, uh, and then vice versa. So it's good to check them both. Actually, if you're having trouble locating someone on the census, I would recommend trying Heritage Quest and Ancestry and uh, FamilySearch.org, but for Heritage Quest, uh, I went to my local public library's website and I saw that there's a link here for online resources, and in there I saw Heritage Quest, and that's how I found out about it. And I discovered that if you once you click on the link on your library's website, it'll prompt you to enter your barcode from your library card. You just need to enter the digits on your library card and hit connect and you'll be in. And this is what it looks like in there. You have city directories, slave schedules from 1850 and 1860. They have Indian census rolls, mortality schedules, which is like, you know, uh, I don't know why they only did it on the, you know, census years, they took a mortality schedule of the people who died the previous year. So um, there's agricultural and industrial schedules and the 1890 veterans census, which can be useful since the 1890 census was destroyed. Uh, it's the only really existing copy of any 1890 census records. So you can access any of those from in here, um, which is great. Uh, you can also they have a lot of tips and resources in here. Um, m there's maps that show the changes if you're interested in, you know, what uh, counties were subdivided and uh, names have changed. So it's really good to look in there and see if, you know, the person where, like, uh, for example, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania was Luzerne County until. 1872 I think uh, somewhere around there so if I'm looking for records of someone that lived in Lackawanna County you have to look in Luzerne County if it's before 1872 so those are good things to know um, a lot of tips here there's also books a lot of 28,000 actually uh, family and local history so you can look up a name of a town where your ancestor lived or your um, or the name of the person themselves but there's a lot of family books and there's a lot of town books like where the towns published birth records from certain years so you can just search for the name of the town and see what it comes up with you might be surprised one of my favorite things on here is the uh, Revolutionary War uh, pension files and the bounty land warrants uh, they give I mean I found amazing things in there where I, one of my ancestors several of them they hand wrote their full account of what they did during the revolution and you know where they went battles that they fought um, who they served under who their general was or um, and you know all, just a lot of interesting stuff plus they also usually provided the names of their children and in some cases I've seen where they would actually take the page from the family Bible that where they wrote all the births and they would send that in as proof of who their children were so just really neat stuff in there and they'll also tell uh, just a lot of personal information so you can search in there uh, there's it's just like ancestry um, but this is free just type in their first name and last name of the person uh, and then you can let's think um, uh, I'll give you an example here. You can just pull up a record and you can look at the actual files. You can look at the actual p forms that they filled out. Always go to the next 
result and see because there's usually more pages than than that about the person see Nathan Wood this is uh, Chautauqua New York or I know I'm saying that wrong but um, some of this stuff is hard to read but you could really pull some good stuff out of here see here's a full account of on the 12th day of October 1832 I appeared in the court before judge uh, of the court of common pleas and this was when uh, they must have just put out a 1832 yes because they all filed for their pensions in like 1832 there must have been an act or a law passed that they could collect a pension at that point so this, if they were still alive, they wrote down everything that happened to them in the in the war. So you can keep reading, and it's just amazing what you can see. All these signatures in here, Nathan Wood's signature there, and other people's accounts of you know confirming that they served with him, and you know oh I knew him since he was born, and we were neighbors, and all kinds of personal stuff. So it's it's really neat. All the files are here, so you can just browse on through and uh, find some great stuff there. So I hope that helps you. Um, and again, you can save them if you want to save it to your computer. And okay, so that's my favorite part of Heritage Quest. But then there's also the the census records, which are are great too. So. Uh, that helps you. Let's let's let me just show you real quick the census and how that works out. It's almost like Ancestry, where you can. Um, it's pretty much maybe they merged with them or something. I don't know, but here you can look at the document, save it, and you know, in 1830 they only gave the head of household up until 1850 so it shows you how many boys were under five boys from five to uh, 15, 10 to 15 is in this column so it's kind of hard to read you can actually get the blank forms so you can see exactly what those say if you can't read them um, on my website there's a link to those on the census page so there's the other great tip of the day. I hope it helps. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.